Alright, welcome back! Uh, it's a new day, and we're going to... Today we're going to learn about... First, we're going to learn about list comprehensions. So what is a list comprehension? Spelled, you know, list comprehension, like that. Um, so essentially, imagine if I was to create a... Uh, Let's say, for example, if I was to um, make the letters, uh, let's say, some of the some of the letters in the alphabet, create a list with them. So I might do something like this. I might say L equals uh, a, a list like that. And then I would say for X in range. And now I would say ORD. Uh, let's say a comma ORD uh, and let's just go up to something like let's say uh, F okay but I gotta go plus one now so doing this because I want to get to F now I would say if I if I just went print chr x, you're gonna see there I'm gonna have a b c d e f. But I don't want to print them. I want to append them into l. So I'm not gonna print. I'm gonna go l dot append, and then I'm going to say. Uh, chr x. Now when this loop runs, look what I have inside L. I have all the letters from A to F. So this is a this is the regular way that you guys have learned how to populate, how to append things or to, you know, create a list with a bunch of things in it. However, there is another way to do this and it's called a list comprehension and the way you do this is in one line so there's so essentially by learning a list comprehension you're not learning something that you don't know how to do you're learning another a different way of something you already know how to do okay so here is here it is i would say l equals now, now wait. Let's let's use a different variable here because we want to compare it. So let's call it m. M equals. Now this is the cool part. Okay, is that I'm going to start off the list comprehension with a list opening bracket. Then I am going to say. Notice here in this loop, the chrx is what I'm adding to the. Uh, to the list every time. So that's what I would do here. I would go chrx. That doesn't have to be, you don't have to use the variable x, by the way. So I could, I could use another one, but I am going to use x here just because I want it to look familiar. Uh, then I would say for x in range, there, there does have to be a, a space here. Okay, so the spaces are important. And then I would say ORD A, just like before, ORD F, and I still have to use the plus one, because it, it's the same kind of a, right? Now, now that I'm done that for, for loop, it says, so the for loop is here. Okay. Now I simply can close off the list. Notice it's I'm I'm putting the close bracket on the list and when I hit enter, now look what's in M. It's exactly the same as L. So, how many lines did this take? Well, it took one line. Is it clear what I'm doing? 
perhaps not as clear in my opinion as this. That to me might look clearer, but you still have to be able to recognize what a list comprehension is. So let's try and do a different one. Uh, for example, I might do something like this. Let's say you wanted all the perfect squares uh, from, let's say, 1 to 10. Okay? What are all the perfect squares in a list? Well, I'll go um, perfect squares equals open list comprehension. And then I'll say x to the power of 2 for x in range 11, or well, I should say 1 comma 11, because I don't want 0. And now I'll just simply close off the, and now perfect squares is, there they are. Okay, so how does this, how is this working? And by the way, um, there is another feature of this list comprehension, which so before I go over that, maybe I should show you the last kind of concept behind it, and that is right now really there's only two kind of sections to it. This is what populates the list, that, that's the first part. Then the second part is the for loop that you iterate through. And the, there is a third one, but it is optional. And the third one would be an if statement. So let me show you what it looks like regularly before I show you what it looks like in the list comprehension. So let's say I did the same thing. Let's say I did the perfect squares. But this time, I'm only going to take the perfect squares of even numbers. OK? So watch this. I'm going to say. Uh, let's call it P S equals empty empty um, okay and then I'm gonna say uh, for X in range 1 comma 11 and then I'm gonna say if x mod 2 equals 0. So only the, I only want the even ones. If that's true, then I'll go ps.append x to the power of 2. Now if I run this, let's take a look at what's inside ps. So notice I don't have one, right? Okay. Um, I I don't have one. I don't have three. I don't have five. I don't have seven. And I don't have nine. But I have all the even perfect squares. So what I mean by even perfect squares, right? is like, you know, the, the, the even numbers squared. OK? So I can now reproduce these four lines. There's four lines here. One, two, three, four. See those four lines? First, I have to create the empty uh, list. Then I have to go and make a line for the for loop. Then one line for the if. And then one line for the append. I can do that all in one line. Watch. Um, so PS right now is this. So let's try it again using, so let me just wipe it out. Or I don't have to wipe it out. I'll just overwrite it, OK? Here it is. I'll say, what is the list going to be populated with? Well, the squares. Now I'm going to go into the loop for x in range, 1 comma 11. Now usually I would close it off here, but you can actually add the third 
uh, optional part of the list comprehension, which is an if statement. And here it is. If x mod 2 equals 0. And essentially, I have squished this entire, these entire three lines into one line. So there's what, what's being appended. There's the loop. And there is the if statement. And now when I hit enter, it works. No error. Let's see what's in PS. Ta-da. Perfect. Just like this. It's exactly the same. So if we go to our whiteboard for a moment, I can kind of show you this uh, in terms of what it looks like. The list comprehension consists of a square bracket. That's a square bracket. Oh, I'm messing this up. Let's start again. Square bracket. And then um, here is what you're appending. Okay, and then the next part is the for loop. And then the next part, which is optional, is the uh, if block or if statement. And this is optional. Okay, and then you close off the list. So those are the three things. And, if, and they're all separated by spaces. And if you look here, this is what I've done. Here is what we're appending. Here is the for loop. And then here is the optional if statement. And the variable throughout this whole uh, Thing is x. Now we don't. I don't have to use x. I can use any variable I want to. Um, for example, I could. I could have done it like this. Could I could. It doesn't even have to be one letter, but just to show you, they do have to be the same though. Like if I use an i there, this has to be i, and if I use an i in the in the in the loop, then this has to be an i. So this is going to be just. This is just fine, as long as they all, as long as the variables all match. Okay. So um, that's an example of what's called a list comprehension. Okay. So the next topic that I'm going to do today is called uh, lambda functions, and uh, lambda function is a function with no name. So usually they're used to uh, define or specify a function in situations where you require a function but you don't have to create a function because a lambda function is a function on like one line usually. So they're for short you know one-liners. So for example watch this. If I made the function let's Call uh, let's say def um, double. Okay, and um, I send x to the function, and the function returns uh, let's say two times x. Done. Okay, so now that's a regular function. So for example, if I call double uh, 4, I should get 8. And I do. But I can do the same thing with a lambda function. And the way I would do that is, now of course, it's kind of odd for me to do this because 
if I was to create it, I'm still going to give it a name, but I'm going to I'm going to uh, I'm going to do that. Let's say I'll call I'll make it the variable f, or I could let's call it foo for now. Okay, so lambda, and then I'm going to send the argument x to it. So in other words, this x is re refers to like the x argument that is sent to the function. The next thing I type in is a full colon. Now I type in what the function returns, although I don't have to type the word return. So I would type in 2 times x. Okay, And so now, even though I didn't have to put foo equals, this lambda function is sufficient on its own in a location that requires a function. I could now actually call it by name by going foo 4 and it will give me 8. So you might say to yourself, well, what's the point if this function has a name which is called double and this function has a name called foo? They both have a name. Well, that's because I gave it a name here on line 23. So when would I not have a name? So let me give you an. I have to kind of think of an example of how to show this to you. So one type of an example that we have used before, in which we require a function name, but not a call, is when we sorted a dictionary by value. So here I have a dictionary. Uh, boy, girl, man, woman are the uh, keys, and the six nine two one are the values. So if you remember, I can sort this. I could so for me to print this uh, dictionary out, I would say something like, for example, uh, for uh, person comma age in d dot items. Remember, d dot items gives two tuples of them. So if I, if I just type it out, just to, just so that you can see it. Okay, so um, d dot items is an iterable, and it's it's tuples. See the round brackets. So a list of tuples, if you want. Um, and so if I go for person comma age in, I'm just using variables here, uh, d dot items, and I go print person and then the age. Now when I do that, uh, they're not in. It's it's not. Oh, uh, well, it might be ordered uh, alphabetically, but that's not by. That's not on purpose. Okay. But rather, I'd like to order them based on the age. Now, in order for me to do that, I'd like for the for this, which is an iterable, right? I can use sorted on that. Now, I can't use I can't use dot sort, but because um, that doesn't return anything. But I can use sorted, okay? And if you remember, sorted. So if I go help sorted. It will accept a key, and that key is uh, the custom key function. Here it is, can be supplied to customize the sort order. So the key is a function. Please don't confuse this with the key of a dictionary. They're completely different concepts. So essentially, I would do the same thing, but now I would call sorted because it's going to return an iterable here. And I'll go comma. And now I'll say key equals. Now the question is, at this point, I have to type in a function. Now I don't, I don't have a function. I haven't made a function that's going to. Now, what, what, type, what would this function do? And what I want it to do 
is I want it to return the second item in the tuple. So in other words, when I iterate over d dot items, those are tuples. Okay? So if it's a tuple, I'm going to say, I'm going to go lambda. Now, this is not a call to a function, remember, right? Because whenever you have a function call, you need the brackets. But this is rather a function definition. Okay, so like a, I just want to kind of watch this. Len is a built-in function, yes? So I don't have to, I don't have to use uh, lambda in this case because len is a function, it's built in. I'm not calling, I'm not calling len, I'm simply providing it as a function name. And now if I run this, Uh, it's exactly the same. Oh no. Well, oh yes, it is. Drats. It just happens to be. Because woman is. Uh, okay. Let's do this then. Uh, how about uh, let's do this? D baby. And um, let's make the baby. How about. Uh, 22 or something I don't know doesn't matter so here we go and now let's go uh, let's go d dot items again I just want it to be a unique situation okay baby was the last one uh, let's run this again now and that's better okay um, but now the woman is longer than oh right 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 so what's going on here the len of all these guys is the same so I want it to be the len of the first thing so this is a perfect situation to use a lambda function. Okay? So uh, let me let me kind of show it to you this way. If you look at this tuple, how many things are in it? Two. How many things are in this tuple? Two. In fact, they all have two things in it. So by calling len, it doesn't actually do anything. What I need is the len of the first item in the tuple. Now you're going to see me use a lambda function. So now what I'm going to say is lambda. And I'm going to, now you need, remember how the lambda function works is you need the argument you pass to it. So I'm going to pass the tuple to it. And then I'm going to say the len of the first item in the tuple. So notice now this is now a lambda function. It's a and it's a it's not a call to the function. Okay? It's a call to len, but essentially my lambda function is going to be calling another function called len. But the argument that I'm passing is t, which stands for the tuple. And now what it's going to return is the length, not the length of the tuple, but the length of the first thing in the tuple, which is index 0. And now when I run it, now it's sorted uh, based on how many things are in the first one. And in fact, listen, I can make it even more. Um, obvious I can go D uh, how about something like uh, let's say capital B equals zero how's that or, or no let's make it even bigger let's make it 66 okay and let's make another one let's go D uh, uh, 
people, P or let's make it peoples, equals 0. Okay, so now what's in D? All, all these things. Let's try it again. Ready? I'm now going to sort them based on the length of the first thing in there. See that? So B is the least amount of characters. That's 1. Boy and man are 3. Girl and baby are 4. Woman is 5. And people is, is like 7, I think. So, so that's a really cool example of using lambda. Let's try it a different way. Instead of sorting it based upon the, uh, the length of the first argument, let's sort it based on the value. So I would simply do this again, but now I would change the lambda function. I would say not the length of the second argument of the of the dictionary key value pair. So I want I want it to be based on 66, 6, 2, 9, 22. So all I would say is if t is the tuple, then return the second item in the tuple. And the second item is index 1. And so now if I run it, notice now I'm sorting them based on 0, 1, 2, 6, 9, 22, 66. So that's pretty cool. So these lambda functions are quite useful. Um, if not, you know, if I if I was to reproduce this without a lambda function, this is what I would have to do. I would have to say def. So I can I can do them again. Uh, watch this. I would say def. Uh, let's. What would we call it? How about um, uh, let's call it um, val. And uh, let's say we send it t. And I would say return um, t1. OK. So now, if I did the same thing, but instead of using a uh, uh, no, not, th not that one, this one. Oops, yeah, this one. Here we go. Too many ups and downs. So instead of typing in this lambda function here, I would say val. Key equals val. And so if I ran this, I should get the same thing. There's a lot of blank lines here. Let's get rid of some of them. There. And I do. 0, 1, 2, 6, 9, 22, 66. Perfect. OK, so essentially, Without having to create this, I can do the same thing simply by doing that. So this function is encapsulated, but it but it has it, it's 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 nameless. It has no name. That's the cool thing, right? So that's what it does. It accepts the tuple. That's the accepting argument, right? This one, and then this is what after the full colon is what is returned. And that's that part from the function val right there. But obviously, in this case, I can provide the function name val because I've created it beforehand. But here, the lambda function doesn't have an actual name. It's simply a function object in memory. So going back uh, one more step, if I was to create uh, a different one, how about let's let's make a different function called um, how about uh, len of len of uh, string, okay? Or how about how about this len of key? Yeah, this is better. Len of key. All right. So in this case, if I said t, it's a function, and I'm, I'm just passing it a tuple. But I don't have to use t. I can use whatever. Let's say lowercase t. And then I would say uh, return len of t0. 
So T0 would be the, because if T is a tuple, and there's, there's two things in that tuple, uh, the first one is the, the, the string, which is the key. So now if I've done this, now I can go up, and I can change this part, right? Here it was. So I'm just going to run this now. Oops, oops. Let's go here. And let's go here. Let's get rid of some of these blank lines. OK, so now I'm going to do this again, but now I'm going to use len of instead of using the lambda. So essentially, I'm doing the same thing in two different ways. So now I'm going to go len of key. That's it. And so when I run this, I get the same thing. B, one character, and so on and so forth. Peoples is the longest one. OK, so the last thing that I wanted to show you with lambda functions is the um, ability to have default arguments. So for example, if I was to, let's say I was to make the uh, double function again, right? I think I already have that one. So if I go double 8, I'll get 16. But what, so what if I call double without an argument? Well, it fails because the function that I created for double requires at least one argument. So what if I make double like this? So if, what if I go def double, oops, and then I was to say uh, x equals Oh, let's say 1. And then I was to say uh, return uh, 2 times x. OK, now <coughs> you know what a default argument is. We've studied that before in previous lessons. So if I now call double like that, it gives me 2. Because if I don't provide an argument for x, then the, the value for x will be 1. So how would you do this in a lambda function? Well, again, let's just call the function f. And let's create it here. Lambda. And now I'm going to say I'm going to pass x. But now I'm going to, usually I would just go x like this. And then uh, now I'm going to put the part that I return. That's usually how I would do it. But just like before, this first part here is where I have my default argument, so or my argument that is passed. So now I can just do this, lambda x equals 1, full colon, return 2 times x. So if nothing is passed, then I'm going to use the value 1. So if I call f now a 4, Yep, I'm going to get 8. But if I call f on with nothing passed, then I get 2. So again, whatever is in the brackets goes before the full colon, and whatever you return comes after the full colon. Very straightforward. And similarly, if we had more than one argument in the function call, for example, uh, let me make the function add and let's pass it x comma y and I think you know what I'm going to return I'm going to return x plus y oops and so now uh, you know if I you know go 7 comma 8 is going to add up to 15 but now I can write a lambda function Let's call it lambda function a, lambda x comma y, full colon, return x plus y. And so now if I call x, sorry, if I call a with the values uh, 5 and 6, I should get 11. And it does. Okay, and you can also use default arguments uh, for you know for more than 
uh, want, you know, you could do something like this. If I don't provide a default argument, make it four and uh, make it five, doesn't really matter. But now, of course, you can do that and you'll get nine. So there you go. There is the wonderful world of list comprehensions and lambda functions today. Uh, I encourage you to try these out. It's very hard to learn just by watching. So um, practice these on your own. Try and make some lambda functions. And um, especially the ones we were using for uh, sorting the dictionary stuff. And uh, hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.